The living and non-living things in a specific area are called an ecosystem. Consider a very small one, like a pond. The water is not living, but it's a very important part of the pond. The mud at the bottom of the pond is not living either, but it provides nutrients and a place to live for the plants and animals of the pond. These non-living things, the water and the mud, are both affected by the living things in the pond. Old leaves and waste fall to the bottom, adding nitrogen to the soil. Floating plants and algae grow in the water, and nutrients are exchanged between the water and the plants. If cattails grow along the edge of the pond, their roots will form mats that trap particles and create new soil. New cattails grow next to the old ones, and after several years, the pond will fill in. It's still an ecosystem with damp soil and reeds, insects, and plants, but it's no longer a pond. There's no standing water. The cattails have changed the ecosystem. In every ecosystem, there are both living or biotic parts and non-living or abiotic parts. They influence each other, sometimes in surprising ways. To learn more about ecosystems, you can set up a simple experiment using two jars. I'm Science Mom. I'm Math Dad. Today we'll show you how you can make an ecosystem in a jar. Hello and welcome. Uh, shout out to McCall and Amir watching in Ottawa, to Katie and Max, Katia, Katia and Max in Ottawa as well, to Elizabeth from Illinois and Mia and Cohen in California. So many others. This is going to be kind of a, a fun day where we're you get to do a lot of this work on your own. We're going to show you what we did in our experiment, but who knows how your results will turn out or what exactly what experiment you will run. That's right. Now we're going to start by looking at the notes because this is our next hands-on activity. And what we're doing is setting up a miniature ecosystem inside a jar. Okay, so this is page number 46 in the notes. Hands at hands-on activity. We called it a mason jar biome. A mason jar ecosystem works as well. What we're going to do is put a bit of soil and rocks into a jar or a cup. You can use a cup if you don't have a jar. And then you want to have two jars that are as similar as possible, except for one thing. The one thing that you are going to change is your variable. A variable. So, so like things that vary or change. So we should call those changeables, right? Changeables. That's a terrible word, Math Dad. No, no. I'm trademarking. Math Dad trademarks changeable. And variable. And the two variables that we used, we did two experiments, and we'll show you our data in just a minute. One was light. We did a, a jar with bright light and a jar that was in the dark. Another mm. one was compost layer. We did one jar that had a compost layer and one jar that had no compost layer. And we will show you the data for both of those. So we got some, some places where you can record your own observations and su some suggested time intervals there but this is really an experiment that you should make your own. You don't want to just run the same thing that the other people have done, and it, but it's pr pretty cool to see how these come out and what changeables you can come up with. <laughs> what variables you can come up with. You can do the same experiment that we did. You can try it yourself, see if you get the same results, or you could come up with your own variable and test something different. It is completely up to you. Now let's pull up our slideshow and check out the data that we had. We're gonna first look at bright light versus low light. Uh oh, oh. I'm at the wrong end of my slideshow. You didn't Spoilers. see anything. There we, <laughs> there we go. Math Dad got to the right end of the slideshow and Science Puppy is here to say, woohoo, experiments. We love doing experiments. And when you do an experiment, you have to have a variable that changes and you wanna keep everything else as much the same as possible. So, so what's the difference between an experiment and a demo, demo? A demonstration, you are making something happen, but you don't have a variable that changes. To have it be an experiment, you really have to have, you have to do it at least twice. Okay. You have to have so the control. So you got control. your control that where everything's normal, and then the variable one? That, where you change it. Yeah, okay, so that, that, that makes sense. So a control and a changeable one. 
That is right. So here we are with day one, setting up our bright light versus low light. And you can see the amount of dirt in both jars is pretty much the same. And if we kind of look from the side now on day two, our seeds are sprouting pretty much the same as well. Yeah. Oh, and, and just to, to, to let you know for sure, just manage expectations, you probably want to watch the video and then set up the experiment, not doing it along with us. This is one that will take a long time to actually perform, but we will show you how to set it up. We will, but I wanted to show you, show you our data real quick first. So here is bright light versus low light. It's the same picture, Science Mom. Oh no, did I copy over the same picture? <laughs> yes. Well, that is my mistake. That is my mistake. Let me show you day, day from the side, because from the side you can see those are two different jars. Two yes, different are. jars and they have seeds that are sprouting. I used chia seeds, but you can use lots of different types of seeds. And then on day three, I actually forgot to take a picture of my low light experiment mm. because it was in the back of a cupboard tucked way up high to be as dark as possible. And this happens sometimes. If you're a scientist and you're recording data, you might make a mistake and forget to record some of your data. <laughs> but on day four, we can see a big difference. Oh, wow. So we're, we're seeing the, on, on oh. the, what did you want me to show? Oh, I was hoping you could move our, our little box since we were blocking the day four, move us down to the bottom. Okay. So I, I'm seeing, it looks a lot taller on the left. Am I, am I wrong that the, the ones without light, even they don't look as green. That's for They're sure. They're not as green and they are a little bit taller because they are reaching for the light. And let's take a look at day five you can see they're getting even longer and thinner and they have not opened up their leaves. So, so they get longer because they're trying to find light? Yes, and this is a good strategy because if a seed is underground, as long as it's dark, it knows it needs to be growing up, 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 because it wants to get to the top of the soil where it's bright. Mm. And if it opens up its leaves underground, that will be bad for the plant. Okay, so I, I think we can probably all agree that even though the ones on the left are taller, they don't look as healthy or, or as good. No, so definitely not. A big difference. And now let's go to day, another view of day five from the side. You can see how green our ones that are in bright light are. The other ones, I only took them out to take a picture. Yeah, the ones once on the right day. look a lot healthier. And then day seven, and that's as far as I, I recorded data. So in one week, we could see a really big difference between bright light and low light. So, so we could be measuring this, this somehow? Like how, what would one measure in this experiment? So in this experiment, you could measure leaf area, how much green you see from the top. You could you know, color that in and record your leaf area. You could measure how high the plants go, or your measurement could be more, uh, more of an opinion, which plants look, look Ooh, the best. If you rate them on a scale from zero to 10. Yeah. Now let's go back to our big view real quick and talk about compost before we show you the results of our compost data. So what is compost, Math Dad? It's what you do when you put a bunch of stuff in a pile and it breaks down over time. So food, like food waste is, or leaves and things. We've, we've got a good compost pile in our backyard. We do. We have a compost pile in our, our backyard that all of the leaves from our tree in the fall go into. And then we also put food scraps from our kitchen into the compost, things that we're that we're not going to eat, like um, apple cores or little carrot peelings and things like that. And why do we do that, Science Mom? We do it because it's good for our garden. So yeah. this compost, when it breaks down and it, it does turn into, it looks pretty much like dirt by the time it decomposes, it's very rich in nitrogen. The plants like that. And when we spread the compost layer and mix it into our garden, our plants in our garden grow better. So my idea with making a compost layer was that the plants growing on top of the compost layer would grow better than the plants that didn't have a compost layer. That makes perfect sense. Let's find out what happened and if my expectation was what I found in my experiment. So here is one last picture of our no light versus bright light. And now here's experiment two, compost layer versus no compost layer. My compost layer was half made out of paper. This was a brown recyclable paper, and it was half made out of food scraps. And the food scraps that I used were carrot peels, grapes, and some broccoli that was starting to go bad. So just stuff we would have thrown away anyway? Yes, but you could use anything for your compost layer. It could be any type of food scraps, or it could even be um, stuff you might find outside, like a bunch of brown leaves, and then maybe some grass clippings from your yard, you know, when you mow the lawn.
I put it in my jar about partway through because I didn't want my seeds growing right on top of the compost. I wanted the compost to be partly buried. That looks like a lot of compost. The, in hindsight, this compost layer was probably a little bit on the thick side because <laughs> once we got my seeds planted, we saw some surprising results. Now these seeds were also chia seeds, but you can use any type of seed. A small seed is gonna be better than a large seed. If you did like a pumpkin plant, something that was really big, you might only wanna put one or two seeds in there and then that might be a little more difficult to get. You have to be very patient because that'll take a that'll long time. That'll take a lot grow. longer. Ch chia seeds are nice because they grow so fast. Right? They do, they'll sprout within just a couple days. And these ones I buried just a little bit into the soil and I did that on both jars. So here's day two, no mm -hmm. compost. We're starting to see that white little root come out of the seed. Yeah. Compost, we're not seeing much yet. Not so much. Day three, oh, our no compost jar has all these nice little green seedlings. Ah, but not the compost jar. No. Ah. Day four. Ooh, I think we have a winner on the left. We do have a winner. The <laughs> jar without a compost layer is doing much better. And then on day five, same thing. We can see that we are getting such better results We're without our compost layer. There's hardly anything going on in the compost no. layer. And on, by a time it's a week later, you can see that the jar without compost has a nice crop of chia seeds and you've got leaves that cover almost the whole entire jar. And then the other one, it is not growing well at all. Maybe it didn't have enough light. They both had the same amount of light. They both had, oh. let's go back to our, our main view, they both had these jars that have a bright puck light glued onto the lid, tons of light. But this one, this jar stank terribly. Every time I took <laughs> off the lid to take a picture, I'd go, whoa, that smell is awful. So I think this compost layer inside a jar caused a lot of gases to be built up. Outside in nature, when you have a compost pile, the carbon dioxide, the methane, and the other gases that are produced, they're going to go out into the atmosphere and they're not going to be concentrated right around a plant. But in this jar, I think we had a lot of carbon dioxide, methane, and some sulfur containing gases that smelled really bad. They all built up in this little tiny atmosphere here. And I think it caused our seeds not to grow very well. Interesting. All right, I want to talk just for a minute about this scientific process, this method of, of inquiry. So we came up with a hypothesis. We had an idea. Compost will make plants grow better. Okay, so then we had to design an experiment that would test this hypothesis. And at, at the end, we, we hope to be able to draw some conclusions. So the experiment was the two jars, and we had to record some observations, either the maybe the height of the plants or how, how green they were or, or how many germinated subjective I, rating. Oh, I put the same number of seeds in each jar, but I had less than half of them germinate in the compost jar. Whereas the compost jar, almost all of them germinated. So you're going to want something that can be turned into a number if possible in your, in your observations. And then once you've observed, then it's time to write up the conclusion. So you've got your methods. So someone could reproduce your experiment, but then you've got some conclusions to draw and you could even run some statistics on it and find an average or make charts and things that, that, that that's really cool and important. But, but this conclusion in the end, I'm kind of curious science mom, what do we conclude is, is composting not good then? Mark, our conclusion is that for a Mason jar, a compost layer does not make our plants grow as well. But I think if we come back and use these same jars with the same soil three months from now, I bet they'll grow better in our compost jar. Mm. And I have some I have some experience with this because I know Math Dad grew up on a dairy farm. If you take fresh cow manure and you spread it over the garden, it's too strong and the plants mm. don't grow well. But if you put cow manure over the garden to fertilize it and wait for several months, then the plants grow better. So I think right now this compost layer is too much too strong, but if we wait for a couple months, I could do this experiment again and see if it works better. Another variable or a changeable, not could a have changeable, added, a would, variable would be trying one with the lid on and one with the lid off because it's possible that, that no, no airflow was problematic. I don't know. That's true too. Although I did take the lids off every day and I even blew in the jars and then I would go <laughs> stink, stink <laughs> about this one, but I wanted to make sure that fresh air got in. So I did that every day. But as long as you treat both jars the same, you're good. 
we have a lot of questions in the chat about what chia seeds are. Chia seeds are not a grass. They are they are a kind of a, a leafy, bushy plant. And if they grow to their full height, they'll be kind of tall. But they produce a seed that is a popular a popular food. And it's kind of a fun, a fun food because it, they absorb water around the seed and get sort of slimy. I think chia seeds are good. My they're, kids they're, they're interesting. They're, my kids think they're kind of gross, but I think they're really good. <laughs> you eat the seeds, not, not the plants. You do. You eat the seeds. Now, I want to show you real quick how, how to set this up. So we'll go through how to set this up, and then we've got some fun quiz questions for you about ecosystems in general. So if you got one of our supply kits, it came with a puck light and a little red sticker. Do we have that video ready, Math Dad? We do. All right, we're gonna show you a quick little video. So these little red stickers here are double-sided, and you can peel one off and put them on the back of the puck light and then stick that puck light onto the mason jar lid. So the pu puck light is kind of shaped like a hockey puck? It is kind today. of shaped like a hockey puck. Now you do not have to use a puck light, but you do want to make sure that if you are doing a, a mason jar biome or even a cup with, with plants growing in the cup, you want to make sure that you have really bright light because plants grow so much better. Most of them grow so much better if they have full sunlight and really bright light. So you were trying to simulate the sun and that makes sense that we would need a lot of light. We wanted a bright light. So once you put it on your lid, you can stick it in and then you just plug it together. The little puck lights that we included in our kits have a plug that goes into the wall and then there's a little adapter that you plug in and then you're good to go. So could we eat th th these plants from this experiment? The chia seeds, if you grew them until they produced seeds again, yes, you could eat the seeds, but I don't know if the actual plant part of chia seeds are edible or not. I would have to look that up. So there you go. Now your jar is all set up. Now, the once you have your light set up, that is one part. And again, if you don't have a puck light to put on a lid, you can put your light next to a bright window or you could use a desk lamp. But the other thing you want to do is have a drainage layer in the bottom. So if you were using cup, I would put some little rocks at the bottom, or you could even use marbles or pebbles from outside. And the purpose of your drainage layer is to help show you how much water is in your cup, because too much water can be bad for your roots. Roots need oxygen. The roots of the plant, they need oxygen. And some plants can take oxygen from the air and send it down to the roots. Most plants can't. Do we have a so, drainage layer in our garden? Yes, it's called just natural desert drainage. Okay, so, so like a, a cup, the water just doesn't have anywhere to go. Whereas you, typically outside it, in the garden, it will the just water keep going can and keep going. percolating down. Yeah. Okay. So if I pour in water here and you look from the side, you can tell, you can see air spaces and you can tell where the layer of the water is. So your drainage layer will help you to not drown your plants because you can look and what you want to see is that right halfway up the drainage layer, that that's where the water level is. Can, can plants really drown? They really can. A plant can drown if it's completely in water and the roots don't get oxygen. That can be bad for the plant. So they just drown slower than, than we do. And well, and it all depends on the plant. Rice, rice can handle being completely submerged in water and cattails can be completely in water and they'll be just fine because mm. they have special roots that can pull in oxygen. All right, so do they need dirt for this experiment? You do, and if you have one of our little kits, you have compressed coconut core, and I want to switch to the other camera real quick and just show you how this works, because these are pretty fun. Ooh, Kaladin's interested. So here is a little puck of coconut core, and watch how much it expands if we put it in water. It's gonna get a lot bigger. This takes just a moment but it will absorb water and it will triple in size. It will triple to quadruple in size. You see it rising up. It's getting taller oh, it is. and taller. It totally is. If you don't have compressed coconut core, you can use potting soil or you can even just go scoop up some dirt from outside. You have lots of options for doing this experiment. And if you put in your coconut or your potting soil and your rocks, and then you realize, oh no, it's too wet. You can just tip it to the side like I did right there and carefully pour out some water. So that, that would be better. Do you better see how much than... taller that is now? So for comparison, this was how big it was before and that's how big it is now. That's quite a change. So that's how, that's how you set it up. Layer of, of drainage material, 
and then your soil, and then your seeds on top. And everybody's is going to look a little bit different. The important detail here is that the two jars or two cups end up being the same as much as possible. You only want one changeable. One variable. So if I have, if I'm using cups, I want to put the same amount of rocks, the same amount of dirt in both cups and the same number of seeds. If I have one experiment in a cup and one experiment in a jar, it's going to be really hard for me to tell why the plants grew differently. Was it because of the cup or was it because of the different light that I used? What was the difference? So just change one thing. All right. So they want to know, Kelly asks, are we doing the bright light versus low light? You get to pick. So we gave you two examples of experiments that we did. One was with light as our variable and one was with compost as our variable. Those are two examples. And if you'd like, you can pick one of those to do, or you could even set up four different cups and do both of those. Or you could come up with your own variable. Ooh, you could get two identical jars, but one of them you could hold and sing to and <laughs> tell how special it was every day. And you could see if that made a difference. I, I don't think it will, but that would be an experiment where you're trying to keep all the other conditions identical, but we just change one thing and we measure whether or not it makes a difference. And yeah, it'd be kind of interesting if that actually did matter, because then, then we'll go sing to the, the plants. On the farm, we would well, we wouldn't sing to the cows. We would play the radio, though, so that the cows would relax and give more milk. Your, and your grandpa said that he said it was a fact that cows gave more milk when there was music playing. But did you ever do an experiment with that math, Dad? Did you ever test it? We, we did not test it. No, we, we should have. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I see Michelle asked, do we need water in the jar? You do want to put some water in the jar. So once you have your drainage layer, you're going to add in your soil. So I'm going to dump in this compressed coconut core and get it sort of even. And then you want to make sure that it's moist, but that it's not water all the way up to the top. So if, you, if it looks like it's water all the way to the top, tip it to the side, drain some out, and then smooth out the top, and make sure your water level is inside your drainage layer somewhere. But you do want it to be nice and moist. And then um, Pickle Obsessed has a great idea for a variable. What if you put one outside and the other inside? That would mm -hmm. be a good variable. That would, although you've got to be careful because outside versus inside, and then trying to keep the conditions the same, like. Can, because we don't want the temperature to change too much so, or the light sources. Be, I, I think by putting them so far apart in such different conditions, you might be changing multiple factors at once. And it, sometimes it's hard to make sure that only one thing changes. Sometimes other things will change. Like mm -hmm. with my compost layer, it looks like I introduced more fungus is growing in this one. I can actually see mold than in my other one. And I also have the production of other gases. So I have lots of things going on here. I want to go back to, to the name of this project. We In the notes, we'd called it Mason Jar Biomes. But in hindsight, that wasn't really the, the best name for this because we're not creating a, a whole biome here. This is more of a little ecosystem. So a biome is more, more of a... a region where the climate is a certain way. Although if we have students making little mason jar ecosystems all over the United States, Canada, and in Bermuda, and in Ghana, then we do we have biomes. Create a biome. Yes, we have mason jar biomes because they're located all over the world. That's not how it works, science mom. <laughs> so in, in the desert, for example, an ecosystem is the non-living and living things in a particular area. But we have desert biomes because we have really similar ecosystems in different places around the world. But a oh, habitat uh, I, is I, smaller. I like what you said. Though. So like a biome is a place where you might have similar ecosystems. Yes, ah. exactly. But a habitat is much smaller and a habitat is only the non the non living things. OK, so th you think of a biome more as a region and the ecosystem is the community and all the interactions that are taking place. and a habitat is more like your your house, your a address where where you live. Good distinction. Okay. Kyler wants to know, can you put glow in the dark fish pebbles instead of gravel? You can use pretty much anything for it, your drainage it needs layer. To be bigger though than sand, right? It does. Fish okay. pebbles work really well. Marbles. And, and the thing about aquarium gravel is you know that it's already been it's already been cleaned and it's not going to leak out stuff into the water. 
you don't want to put something in there like Cheerios that's going to dissolve <laughs> and turn into a, you know, a Cheerio is nice and big, but once it gets wet, it's going to dissolve and leak stuff into your water. <laughs> All right. Are we ready for questions, Math Dad? I think we are. I think we are ready. And Science Puppy is totally asleep. Oh. All right. So if you go to itempool.com slash science mom slash live, then you are ready for some polls. And we have a happy birthday shout out to Darcy, who turns eight on February 26th, and Sophia, who has a birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Sophia, happy and birthday. happy birthday, Darcy. All right. Aladdin wishes you a happy birthday, too. Happy birthday. Question number one. What is the name for a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment? <gasps> the is living it, and the non-living things together. Right, is it an ecosystem, a biome, a habitat, or a building? A building. It, it could be building. <laughs> no hints, science mom. <laughs> All right. Biological community of interacting organisms Whoops. and their physical environment. I just bonked Kaladin on the nose accidentally. <gasps> we didn't mean it. We didn't mean it, Kaladin. I don't think he minds. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of curious what different right, variables you guys are going to come up with for your experiments. And this is definitely one where you have to have patience. It, you're not going to be done in, in an hour. You can set it up in an hour, but you're not going to finish it. You've got to come back day after day and, and measure. All right. The chat says ecosystem. ecosystem and ecosystem is correct. Let's go on to our next question. All right. Question two, Ooh, from smallest to largest, we've got blank is in blank, which is in blank. All right. So biomes, then habitats, then ecosystems or ecosystems, then biomes, then habitats or habitats, then ecosystems, then biomes. And we have had a couple questions about the coconut core. You do not have to use coconut core. We put this in our little supply boxes because it was really easy to ship and it's light and it's compressed and doesn't take up as much space as potting soil. And you want to add at least four times as much water as the space that this takes up. And if you put it in a separate container, add lots of extra water and then wait till it puffs up and then you can drain off any extra water and then put it in your jars. That might be an easy way to do this. Yeah. But the, the important thing is just that the two jars are as, as close to the same as possible with only that one variable. Yep. All right, boy. So all three are getting some votes, Science Mom. This could be the one. I don't think you're going to stump them, Math Dad. Let's uh, find out. And answer C. Woohoo! Habitats, then ecosystems, and then biomes. Good That's, job, you guys. All right, they got it right. I don't know, though. More of a miss to think nope, got it right, nope, though. they got it right. What? Oh, they, get, okay. they get credit, Math Dad. Question three. Compost can be useful to plants because it provides carbon to the soil, because it smells bad and scares away predators, <laughs> it provides nitrogen to the soil, or provides a brown color. So why is compost useful for plants? Good question from Kelly. Does the coconut fiber actually count as dirt? So this is, this is made out of particles from coconut husks. Oh. And really dirt, the purpose of dirt is to provide a place for the roots to grow, to make sure that there is space so that they can get oxygen and water, and then to provide nutrients. So does the coconut core have a lot of nutrients in it? Not a lot, but it does provide a really nice moist area for roots to grow. So it does it does count as soil, even though it does it's not technically soil. It yeah, performs the same function. That's, that's an, an interesting question. All right, I'm going to reveal the answer. And it provides nitrogen to the soil is the Woo correct answer. They got it right. Good job. Oh. And it does not provide carbon to the soil, because remember, plants get carbon from the atmosphere. That's right. So although, although this compressed coconut core, you're right, it is made out of carbon. There's carbon in here. The plants are not using that carbon. They're getting their carbon from CO2. All right. Question number four. When running an experiment, you should, and then select all that apply, change lots of variables at the same time, change only one variable at a time, have a control scenario, and carefully record all your observations. So select any correct answers there. Caitlin says that you can never stump them. They're the undefeatable <sighs> science kids. All right. You talk a big talk, Caitlin, but 
we'll, we'll see if you can walk the walk. Creative Koala also says that you're never going to stump them. Oh. <laughs> Let's go ahead and Just finish and ask reveal. harder questions. <laughs> harder and harder. All right. And B, C, and D are the correct answers. So you should carefully record your observations. You should have a control scenario, so, so some place where you're not changing a lot of variables, any variables. And then you should have the only one variable at a time changing, because otherwise you won't be able to draw any conclusions from what happens. That you might say, true. well, something changed, but I don't know why. And that's why we want to change just one thing at a time, because then we can say, oh, it was probably because of that changeable. Variable, not a changeable, a variable. I, I trademarked this. <laughs> yep. All right, question five. Will plants in a compost layer grow better or worse than plants without a compost layer? And Margaret or Kalia wants to know, do you have to water it every day? You do not need to water it every day, especially if you if you have one in a mason jar with a lid on top, that lid keeps a lot of the water from evaporating. And so oh. I would say check it every day to see how it looks, but probably you only need to water it once a week. It all depends on the rate of evaporation, which is gonna be different based on how warm your house is, how humid it is. But in my experience, I don't need to water these very often at all. Only maybe once a week or once every two or three weeks. All right. Math dad, you're going down. And did I stump them? They said, oh, wait. They said it, it depends, which it depends. I think is the right answer. Math dad, I think you marked the wrong answer. That's right. Um, yeah, it depends is definitely the right answer. <laughs> so double victory <laughs> dance for the undefeatable I, science I, I was kids. looking at your jar. Your jar was worse, but you're saying it depends in general? It does. So oh, okay. for sure, in my jar, the, the plants grew worse with the compost layer. But in our garden, the plants grow better if they have compost mixed in with the soil. So it really does depend. It's possible to have too much compost. Right, well, and it's possible that jars are just not so good for the, the composting environment, especially with a lid on the jars, like may maybe that air needs to circulate. Exactly. So you should be careful in the conclusions that you draw from an experiment, but also you, you need to respect those conclusions because some people they're like, oh yes, I. I, I, I like this scientific method, but only when it agrees with what I already think is true. And well, then it's not a scientific method at all. It's no, it's no good and you're not going to learn anything from it if you only trust results that agree with what you already thought. That is true, but Math Dad, I think you're just trying to get out of doing the defeat dance. Oh, okay, I'll do the defeat dance. All right. Is it a chicken floss this time? We should do more recorded, pre-recorded dances. Okay, that was bad. Oh, sorry. I, sorry. I gotta stretch. Science puppy is like, what in the world is going on? <laughs> All right, you you earned your dance, guys. N nicely done. I'm, I'm I'm impressed. Five out of five on those questions. Good job. If you have any questions as you are setting up this experiment, don't hesitate to email us, and we hope that you will share some of your results after our spring break. But uh, th there's not just one way to do this, though. So d don't feel like you need to copy what we did. Pick pick what you want to measure and, and how you're going to do it and try to plan out the experiment from beginning to end and, and, and treat it fairly, but realize that there's not, well, I suppose there are wrong ways to do it, but there are so many right ways to do it. Don't try to just duplicate what we did or feel like you need to. Yep, you can set it up whichever way you want. You can do compost versus no compost, light versus dark, you could even do lots of soil versus no soil or growing on rocks versus growing on soil. There are lots of different ways that you could do this. And if you if you got our supply box, the seeds that we put in here were clover, Bermuda grass and creeping thyme. But you can use seeds from around your house, too. If you could use wheat seeds, you could use chia seeds, you could use corn. Um, there are a lot, you know, popcorn. There are lots of different options. And I do want to show just real fast. Here is a jar that I have kept alive now for two and a half months. And it has one clover plant and it has four little thyme plants that I trim back every now and then. I was hoping that they would get thicker and make more of a carpet on the bottom, but they stand, tend to stay pretty tall because the jar is so humid. And in this jar, I have some succulent plants. So there are lots of different examples of plants that you could do. It doesn't have to be the ones that we did here. 
Look at this chat. They're just talking all types of schmack about me. Okay. Oh, yeah. You guys are going down. <laughs> we, we have established very well that these are the undefeatable science kids, Math Data. You're going to have to ask really tough questions to stump them. <laughs> we hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend. Work hard, grow smart. And as I said earlier, if you have any questions about this experiment, don't hesitate to email us. And we hope that you have fun setting up something and then discovering new things.